Yo, 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 this is Afi Kingdom, and we got Glenn Lawrence and AV. Let's just get right into it. Sorry for the late start. What's going on, fellas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on, everybody? There we go. There we How's go. life? <laughs> That's a loaded question, man. It really is. And I and I say because I loaded it in my <laughs> it's loaded. You set it up, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, um, but no, like life is what you make of it. Let's just face it. Yeah, man. It's, it's as corny as that may sound. It's so true, man. It's it really like, is. Yeah, it's, um, you know, we always talk about nobody cares. And, um, you know, the people that you want to care won't, but the people that you least expect do care. Um, so at the end of the day, man, you know, life is truly what you make of it. You know, we yep. all fall down, but it's so important to f come back up and if you can't hopefully you'll have somebody in your circle to remind you and give you a reason as to why you need to get back up yeah exactly exactly mm -hmm. so you know i know we talking game girls and life the movie um so avi why don't you just set it up man come on <laughs> <laughs> i'm i'm punting back to you <laughs> it's all good i'm a professional what's going on tlp Joe Blast to King, what's going on? So, so yeah, you know, the, the game, the girls and the life is just, you know, for you guys to, to, you know, we're talking about a red pill movie, but I don't want to put that in the title, you know. Right. Yeah. That's the, that's the part of that part because, you know, they be acting funny with that nowadays. So, I don't no, no, that. no. Yeah. But my man, Glenn Morris, you know, he's a, uh, he's an actor and he has a movie that he's putting together and it's a, it's a, that's a red pill movie. So you can pass it back to you. What's up, Trap? And you yeah. can talk, you could talk about that movie. Yeah, so you know, over the summer, I I've been I've been an actor for a while now. And I was like, you know, I really want to get into creating my own content. I mean, I got tired of doing music videos where I'm like the asshole boyfriend. Hmm. You know, the toxic masculine guy. I'm gonna do it for a paycheck. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not if they want me to be that guy, fine. I'll be that guy. Pay me. You know what I mean? Um, but it's, you know, um, I was like, you know, I really wanted to write a movie that I see a lot of guys dealing with and a lot of guys struggling with. And it's this dating world, right? You know, these guys, like there's so many guys that I've talked to that have been told me they've been scammed or conned or catfished by some chick they met on Tinder or, you know, Facebook or whatever the case may be. And what are they trying to find? They're trying to find love or whatever. Right. And I was like, you know what, this will be, we live in a, there's never been a dating movie about a dating app ever in our time frame because it hasn't been relevant enough until now. Mm -hmm. And so I came up with this movie and a lot of it's based on my own struggles in life. And it's, it's, there's a lot of personal stuff that I learned that, um, you know, in this process, um, when I was married, I was the happy wife, happy life guy. And I did everything and sacrificed everything to please the wife who end up cheating on me three times and alienating my son away from me. And I got zeroed out by that. And I was like, what did I do wrong? How did I do it wrong? If I did everything that the pastor tells me to do and everything that society tells me to do, I should be winning, but I lost. So I learned, I, I had to learn that I wasn't living in my own frame. And so the main character, Derek, in this movie is a guy that just re is coming out of a divorce and he doesn't know why his life just crumbled. And he's trying to find love. He's trying to find a decent, meaningful relationship. And him and his buddy create an app called Mind Dates. And it's a dating app that's for um, it's a dating app for guys or for people to try to find like minded people to connect with. So, and, but the problem with what Derek realizes and he ends up learning through this whole thing is he's not living in his own frame. 
he was living in his wife's frame to do the happy wife, happy life thing, and it never worked out for him. And now he's sleeping on his buddy's couch, and he's doing everything to please his buddy, and he has the you know, happy buddy, happy life thing to not rock the boat, and he's still unhappy. And Rolo Tomasi, first rule, not iron, iron rule number one, frame is everything. Always remember whose frame you're operating in. You know what I'm saying? So this whole movie is based on frame and interacting with women. And it's like what women wants with a little bit of red pill frame game. And the whole process, the whole movie concept is this guy learning that he has to live in his own frame in order for him to reach that level of success and happiness that he wants in his life, whether it's a relational or business or friendship, the whole thing is frame. Frame is everything. If you don't control your frame, you are a subject to somebody else's frame. You're making life decisions based off somebody else's rule book, not yours. And that's what this whole movie's talking about. You know, it's 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 funny because we go on these dates with with my character, and you see him, you know, trying because he ends up being able to read people's minds. There's an accident happens. I don't want to give all the details out because yeah, it's a yeah. little sci-fi, but you know, he he gets he gets this freak accident to where now he's like Mel Gibson and what women want, and he can read everybody's mind. Nice. And then so he's like constantly changing himself to who these people want him to be because he could read their mind. But then he realizes he's still not happy because he's being fake to win these people over because he's reading their mind. And so he comes to the conclusion that he just needs to do what he wants at the end of the day. And at the end of the day, as soon as he started doing what he wants, the right girl comes in the frame and everything starts working out for him. And it, it, so it's called mind dates. And, you know, to give you a little more history about it. So I invested a couple thousand dollars, several thousands of dollars into this movie um, for pre-production and everything. Um, I found a director, producer guy that I met on set, one of the films that he was working on. And um, come to find out he's not the guy that he says he is. Um, he actually is a scam artist. Um, he scammed people in San Antonio out of $350,000. Scammed the, the group of people I was working with on his film for several thousands of dollars. And, um, you know, it. when I realized he took me for my money, it was almost a little too late. Like, I have no way to recoup what I lost. You know, we are working with the feds trying to get um, here. You mind? I'm going to share the screen. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, uh, we were working with the feds trying to get uh, everything caught up. And this is the guy right there. Hold on. Is it in? There it is. This is him. my cousin man what you doing <laughs> your cousin owes me some money but um i don't want to give him much fame more than that but like yeah this guy took me for several thousands of dollars um we were supposed to be in miami filming right now um and then he jumped ship and ghost uh it's horrible because uh you know i have a lot of people that are looking for this film I have a lot of people I got to pay for this film. Um, and it it just goes to show that, you know what? Like, you could be red pill. You could be alpha as fuck or whatever you want to call it. You could still get gamed. You could still get scammed. You could still get, you know, um, you frauded. And uh, it is what it is. And now, you know, to get for me, the order to get this movie funded... It's like I have to do a grassroots movement because I poured everything I had. And it's like, okay, I got to figure out a GoFundMe or a Go Indiegogo or something um, to get this film going. And we'll make it happen. I know it's going to happen. It's a matter of time. It's just, 
one of those things like when you learn a hard lesson, you're like, damn, I got kicked in the dick and that kind of hurt. <laughs> right. Yeah. So is there, is there a timeline on this on when you want everything to be done? I would love to have this film done in 2022. Yeah. I would love to have the movie done in 2022. Um, the budget is pretty steep to get these things done. Um, like I know that I would need at least like uh, close to 250 thousand to even pr- to get the production rolling. So there's permits that you, we have to pay for. Miami's ridiculous for permits, um, for filming permits, and it's on a lottery basis. So it's like kind of like first come first serve. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it, it's just one of those things where it's just like, okay, let's raise the money. Let's raise the funds again. Let's get that back up there. Um, we want to shoot a trailer and we're probably going to shoot a trailer first. Um, I know we need 10 grand to shoot a trailer for a two and a half minute trailer. So if I could raise 10 grand, then we got a red pill trailer out that we could use the trailer to pitch to more investors um that are they're wanting to see this film come out so it, it's a process dude like there's an ugly side of hollywood everybody talks about it but we don't talk about it at the same time there's a real ugliness to this industry i think you're um i think this this is an important movie man i think i think everyone who's listening who supports afi who supports glenn fact that Afi has him on the platforms, you know, it's pretty much a co-sign in itself. I think it's an important movie to get done because mainstream Disney programming, everything that we watch is not in the favor of the man. It's not in the favor of the man to have his own frame, his own mind. The wife and the girlfriend are smart. The daughter smarter than the dad, all this shit. So it's bigger than a dating. I know it's mind dates, but I know, I think there's a lot of underlying tones that a lot of people need to see. And then hopefully based on the success that this movie makes, maybe it will encourage other people to make other movies for guys like us. You remember that, that slogan guys who like movies, yeah. tough guys, some shit like that. I think it's important, bro, because I can't watch anything current. I got to go back to my DVDs, go back to my old school classics because I can't relate. You know what I mean? And even though, some people call me stubborn, a dinosaur, outdated. I'm really trying to, you know, kind of keep my ears to the street about what's going on outside. But at the end of the day, man, there's a lot of guys and even younger guys that don't know it. They need movies yeah. like you're trying to make, man. So Well, it's funny because like I have like I have another concept idea um you know, uh for a film <laughs> and it's about um so let me be your advisor on this film. I got money for you i got a 400 match on dating app okay travis uh hit me up bro hit me up on instagram um but um it's funny because like i have another movie concept about called the good wife and it's it's about a divorcee a woman that's divorced she plays like the um i'm the victim mentality and (laughs) yeah and it, it actually she's a black widow so every new husband she gets, she sucks them dry, kills them off, you know? And it kind of goes back to that whole, you know, thought process of don't get into a relationship with somebody that has kids. You know uh, what I mean? Like, like you're, another man's trash is not another man's treasure. It could just be trash. And I'm not calling women trash, but... At that little bit, because you know what, you know that's a lot of uh, a big like statement in the space about the single mothers. I want to hear your take on this. Uh, we never had this conversation. My take? Hmm. I, I personally don't think that. Okay, this is where I look at it. I married a single mom, so I fell for it. I, 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 I thought like, okay, yeah, it was him that was a problem. He's the problem. Come to find out, now, nah, I mean, the dude was a problem. And he made himself a problem for me, but the real root of the problem was her. Mm-hmm. So going off from what I, my experience is, is like that whole thing, like, you know, the church is like, oh, you need to marry her. You need to make a good woman out of her. Just forgive her sins of having a kid out of wedlock or having another marriage or whatever. Like she's moving on. That's fine. But why is she moving on? If 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 the guy's not always the problem, and that's the thing, we're 
every story that we see on TV where a woman is running away from an abusive partner or whatever, it's the guy's fault. Oh. The no, nobody ever gives you the preloading story of what happened beforehand. Like we see, we capture these, you know, scenes where like the guy smacks a woman, hits his fault. That's why she's running away. He's an asshole. He's abusive. But you don't see the other 10 chapters where maybe she's trying to stab him with a knife or, <laughs> you know, she's trying to, she's instigating and, and pushing him to a point to where he would snap. You know, we don't see that and we don't talk about that. So with this movie, this other movie idea that I have is about that. It's about the behind the scenes stuff that we don't see in everyday life. It's like the movie Gone Girl on steroids. I think it's important, man. It's important because like I was saying, you know, a lot of guys, I mean, guys, think about it on YouTube for that matter. So many viewers want to watch somebody else tell a woman that she's wrong. Right. Or they are so intrigued by the reality TV of the RP space and the talking points that you guys talk about. So if you can do a movie, several different series or movies in regards to the some of the talking points that we talk about, that that's something that can sell. And that's something that people will want to see because they want to see people act out things that they probably could never do. I mean, getting coaching is one thing, but seeing it and being able to apply it is another man. So. You know, if you guys want to support Glenn, man, you know, make sure you guys hit him up so we can figure out how to get this movie done, bro. Because I think it's important. I mean, he's he has one of the resources to do it. I mean, he's he's an actor. He's doing it. I know there's a couple of other guys, too, that kind of dabble in that. Yeah, like Sabo. Sabo got yeah, some Sabo. Sabo's, yeah. Sabo got some fire. I mean, I love his shit. You know, he, he's funny. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and see, I'm more. I'm, mine dates is a comedy. But The Good Wife is a is a suspense thriller. And I wanted it to be very dark. And I wanted it to be this way because, I mean, um, I've been through it. I've been through The Ringer. I, I know exactly what it's like on that other side. I know how dark it is when you get zeroed out. And I know what it's like, you know, having to rebuild yourself. And you know what? There's a lot of guys that get... They don't know how to rebuild themselves. You know, um, history is written by by victors who decide to write the story. You know what I'm saying? Movies are told by victors who are writing the story. Right. You know, and that's exactly what it is. A movie is a story that we're telling. And society has it right now to where you can't get this type of content in films. Right. It has to be independent. And we're like, okay. We're going to be victorious independently throughout the culture. You know, there's think about this between all the red pill channels out there. And I'm not saying they need to give it to me, but let's say every subscriber that was on, that's connected to a red pill channel that follows and donates. If all of them donated $5, right? I can make four red pill movies. <laughs> right, right. Do you know what I'm saying? That's not even, that's not even a drink at Starbucks. And it's crazy because we said we want this, but how bad do we want it? Because we have to want to invest in it. And, you know, it, it's it's crucial because we've got guys killing themselves or deleting themselves, self-deletion, 3.5 times the rate of women. And nobody wants to talk about these problems that guys are going through. And there has to be a story about it. And we see these stories about it in the news, and we just kind of dismiss it and write it off like it's nothing. You know, oh, it's toxic masculinity. Or it's, you know, he has mental health problems. Right. That's not always the case. I'm going to keep it real, man. A lot of these guys are soft, man. That's why this happens, bro. Like, uh, you know, there's this. It, it, it's like this. There's there's a there's a lot of smart people. There's not a lot of smart people and a whole lot of dumb people, and it's the same guy, same guidelines when it comes to the dating awareness. You know, there's a few guys that know stuff, and most of the guys know nothing. So, with the with the majority, um, with with the majority, they, I mean. You know, like we're up here, we're all game tight, but 
you know, if you look at different spaces, the more needier the content, the more needier the audience. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. they, they don't have nothing going on in their life, so they want drama. Or, you know, dudes, they just live and die by the peace. So they want to hear about that, you know. Uh, there's not too many men who live with purpose and that just uh just live to for, for their best life. They just want a quick fix, whether that be information, and they want a quick fix when it comes to validation from women. That's what I would say. What you got, AV? I agree with you, man. You know, it's a how bad do we really want it? How bad, you know, the thing is for me, what I've noticed just kind of being, you know, first, I guess my first semester and shit in this whole content creative shit, bro. A lot of people don't know what they need. You know what I mean? They, they, they know what they think they want. And then once they get it, they don't even know how to handle it. They don't know what to do and shit. It's kind of like, you know, women want a high value man, but when, they don't want to put in the work to maintain the, that man or dudes want to drive Lamborghinis and shit, go on yacht parties and shit. Don't have credit. They want a rotation of bitches of, of chicks, excuse my language. And then they can't even, they can't even manage those broads. So guys are, are, it's like guys are eating with their eyes, bro. Or their ears. Like they just want to keep eating and consuming content, not knowing if it's for them. They're just gorging content. And they're putting their money, they're re-super chatting the same people just so their name could be in lights and shit. They just like, <laughs> but there's no, there's no return on their investment. So it's like, if they're not willing to invest in anything of substance, why would they want to invest in something that they actually need? Like a movie, like somebody that's going to fall on the sword and actually do something for the first time for this community. Because yeah, he's going to benefit from it, but it's like a book. Afi got like 20 books and shit, but you know, yeah, he's doing it for you guys, but he may not see, God forbid, you guys can appreciate it for, for years to come. So that super chat's gone, but a movie, you could keep rewinding, you could chop it up, you could learn from it for years to come. So that's what I'm saying. Everybody wants a quick fix, but nobody wants to invest in their future because this community, even though we're not protecting it, everyone's pissing all over the place, take it for granted. I didn't grow up with shit like this. We all OGs. We didn't grow up with shit like this, bro. So there's some things that, I, that I've recorded and saved on an external hard drive so I could keep for myself because a content critic could just strip his shit and just take it from you. And it's like, man, fuck it. I'm not doing this shit anymore. And then what you going to do? How are you going to refer back to it? A movie, you can go back and learn from it. So you guys got to, you know, it's kind of like the content. You can create Afi. I mean, you're, you know what I mean? You're doing your thing. But, like, guys don't want to hear anything positive. They want to hear everything that's ratchet. And it's it's just it just kind of shows us in a reflection of who's listening and who wants to put in the work, man. And, and look, but before before you, because you said about the books too. Shout out to Rarity Goddess. You let's go, lady right there. I see you. Oh, let's go, let's go, let's go. Shout out to Topaz. What's up, girls? How you how you doing, guys? Shout out to Daryl. Daryl, peace, peace, peace. Try. Peace, try. I don't even find enough women. I like to have constant rotations. You know what I think it is? This is what I've I've come to. This is my conclusion. The feminist movement have made women not feminine. So women don't even know how to be feminine anymore. You know, and 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 you got these guys, you got women being so masculine and guys being so feminine. It's like reversed, right? Like you mentioned, like there's movies that I love. That I that I that I can't find on 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 Amazon or I can't find on you know Netflix or anything, you know you can't find. I was watching Billy Crystal today in in uh, um, City City Slickers too, and I was like, damn, Billy Crystal is such a puss, and I don't mean that in disrespectful, but his character is this guy scared of everything. But then I go and I watch. Um, you know, Makai Pfeiffer and paid in full. And I'm like, damn, dude was boss in that. You know, and I mentioned Makai Pfeiffer because I'm I'm blessed to be on a project with him right now. So awesome. I'm filming with him. Yeah, like with him and uh Franco. Um nice. We're you know, I'm filming with them Monday and Tuesday, and then a couple other days later on this month. But like I'm watching these guys on set, and these guys are alpha dudes in their field. I don't know their personal lives, but I mean, like on set, they know what they want, they go after what they want. And it's a badass fighting movie. And it's just like, 
we don't get that very often, you know, in this culture. Men being men is now so frowned upon that we don't celebrate men for being men. We celebrate men for being women. And it's sad. When you when we celebrating, you know, guys that wear dresses in magazines and we're saying that's bravery. That is garbage. Like that's not bravery. You know, the guys that the movie 13 hours greatest movie ever you know a long time about about what happened over in, in, in uh, libya you know or lebanon and those guys that's that, that was what bravery was but we're not celebrating bravery we're celebrating pussified men cowarding and you know what? This community, we're, we're a community of men that have all been there. We've all been through it. And we're sharing notes with each other. And we're telling about each other's experiences. And we could, there's there's movies that, you know, Afi can make based on his interaction with women. There's movies that you can make, A.B., with just your relationship status, you know, that you've been through. You know, there's always some type of movie that can be made based off that where do movies come from somebody's experience they're telling a story we could do that we we have we are the workforce and men are the workforce in our society we can make movies how we want it we don't have to take these weak movies from marvel anymore we don't got to take these weak movies that hollywood gives us and 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 have to and take it we don't have to Right. Uh, let me let me uh shout out to my man Mercer's art. <clears throat> Reese Reese Black for the super chat. He says pass them through to drop ends off to, for the dog fun. Yeah, they all know appreciate you. Y'all make sure y'all subscribe to him. Um matter of fact, if you guys are moderated, could you put my cash app in the chat because I'm gonna take donations for this movie. When you hit the cash app, just uh just put for the movie, put it in the note. And then the other thing I wanted to talk about is is a b brought up the books now you know this isn't this isn't no hate it's just reality and i just report what i see now you see the guy Quan mill has been going viral with his books and stuff right but what is all his books about <laughs> my the thought next door and you know granny got ass too or whatever <laughs> you know and that's what the people eat up it's like you no know, it's, it's entertaining i know and it's probably graphic but it's not, it's not what the, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how to say it without saying it like that, but you know, you, 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 you've seen the series and the just so, and it's like, so that's the stuff that, you know, we talked to AV, like that's the stuff that's going viral. That's the stuff that's going super is, is that man, like, you know, double, double teaming chicks and, <laughs> And graphic sex nottos, you know, threesome in the hood, like stuff like that, bro. Like, <laughs> threesome in the hood. Yeah, yeah. you yeah, that's crazy, that's man. What's going on, bro? It's, it's the real talk though. Like peace, I said, peace. you know, so that's that's the stuff that's 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 really doing the numbers and stuff like that. And then it's the same thing with social media is when we when people do that and then they become successful, it, it promotes other people to try that formula, and then we have so much of that. That we can't get it back. Boom. That's let me piggyback on that. First thing Glenn said, we're not celebrating masculinity. You know, what we're doing is we're celebrating conformity, right? So if you're acting like everybody else, just like what Afi was saying, everyone's trying to mimic a particular formula that was successful in lieu of putting actual creativity or talking about their own story, right? So we always talk about authenticity. But conformity is more celebrated than authenticity, bro. So you got a guy that's creating a movie that wants to create a movie about stories that the majority of the, the, the community has experienced. No one has thought about it. No one has had the resources or the connections. But yet you rather watch a rerun of a show that you've seen before and recycled. So... That's where you guys got to really look at yourselves in the mirror. I mean, because at the end of the day, paying it forward, if you guys want to keep this community going, and I'm not just saying 
just because I'm on a show with Glenn. What I'm saying is he's act- at least he's trying to do something that's going to benefit us all. Content is one thing. Making a movie is another. So you guys got to look at that, man. You got to see if we want to keep this community alive, this information that's been valuable to all of us in whatever capacity. We have to support the people that still want to do it and still want to not conform. They want to be authentic and really stick to their guns and understand that what you guys need doesn't sell. What is good isn't necessarily what is perceived as good. You know what I mean? So I respect dudes that just really, because again, me being an aspiring content creator, man, we talk about it. Afi was talking about it. Right now, I'm in the transition trying, even though I'm new, I'm still trying to figure out how I can monetize who I'm becoming. Because when I first got on the shit last year with Afi, I had different goals and intentions. Now, a year and a half later, I'm not, after all the beef and all the nonsense I see on the street, like Glenn said, there's no friends in this shit business. It's like, you know, I kind of know, I kind of know what I want and what I need and what you guys are going to need when you turn 48. So it's like, you know, you got to figure out what's, you got to stick to your guns, man. And if you guys want to keep this community alive and kind of keep a balance, definitely try to see if you can support this movie, man, this movement, bro. You, you just just real quick, shout out, shout out to Slick Rick. I see you, baby, because like Peace, Slick. even 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 you and, and your witness to this, like, you know, like this is a chill stream. You know, some people may like it, some people don't. I'm embarrassed that my most uh I would not that my most viewed, but my most super chatted one was about toxic women, bro. With a with a women panel, bro. And the thing is, is y'all didn't know it, but me and AV planned that, and we were right, bro. <laughs> Dude, Glenn Lawrence, if you look at the, the Super Chats were so nonstop, bro, I could not keep up with them. They were literally nonstop. Just go, just going, going, going. It was yeah. crazy, bro. Like, why? I got more ch- Super Chats for that than my birthday, bro. That's how fucked up y'all is. <laughs> y'all will recognize the Toxic Women panel I get more super chats and donations for that than my own damn birthday, bro. That's crazy. That is crazy. And I told you, remember after the scene, like, I think we got a hit, but I can't keep doing this, bro. It's not my life, bro. I've never been more exhausted after a show. But that was crazy. Like, it, it, you could not keep up with it. And I'm like, damn, bro, this is what I got to do to get the respect on the name is this. Had women up here arguing, bro. That's what that's what I gotta do. And you know what's funny? The sad <laughs> thing is, it's like I'm not gonna even make content to go in that direction. Like the movie Mind Dates is not about women. The movie Mind Dates is about the guy named Derek learning to live in his frame. Yeah, we highlight some shit women do and some shit women think. Okay, what well, we highlight the the funny thing about this movie is we're highlighting all the things that guys do wrong, <laughs> and all the things that guys are taught to do, and we and how that doesn't help them. So um, the whole I'm not I'm not bashing women. I can't fix women. Let me get that straight. I can't fix women. I can talk to men. Fact. That helps men. You know what? I'm not in the business of fixing women. And I'm not in the business of entertaining women. There's enough entertainment out there for women. I'm in the business of bringing funny, you know, truth for men to help men get better at being men. I don't need, I'm not trying to teach men to be feminine men. I'm teaching, I'm trying to teach men how to be men. Okay, because we don't have enough men. And you know what? I and I plot. I, I feel for the ladies because they're like, "Where are all the real men at?" And I'm going, "Well, where all the real men are at? You guys have neutered them. So stop neutering the men with the content that you come out with, yeah. right? And then then you'll have some real men. But the fact is, we as a society have been neutering men left and right. And then ladies are going, "Well, where are all the real men at? Well, these are." You know, they're already tied down because they got a girl or they're, you know what, they're out of the game because they don't want to put up with these woke women. So it's like, you want to know where real men are at? Well, we need to create real men. And this community, this community has the tools to do so and they're doing it. 
We're doing it with content creators right now. But we could take it a step further than that. We we could we could we could fight the culture on the same level that they're fighting us on. And that's with bringing out movies, you know, the music video Thought Mommy's in the club cracks me up because I think we all been to a club and we all have ran into a Thought Mommy. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And you know what I like about about the about your yeah, intentions. Yeah, I see you, bro. It What's up, my brother? Followed you too. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, what I like about it is, you guys got to understand something. It's kind of like you know, there's a big debate whether the whether the red you know the RP should go mainstream. It's too late now. You know what I mean? With with you know two of the guys that are leading the charge in terms of where the community, I guess, is going per se, Damn. whatever you want to call. They leading. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold up. I know. Let me I, come up. I, no, I'm just saying, I never really just, what you just said, we could talk without saying it. I never really just thought about it like that. The two the guys that's leading it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Let me, let me. And then we got this vibe. Yeah, let me clean it up. Let me clean it up. Boom. Watch this. So, boom. So, you got two people, two different demographics leading the charge, right? So, again, like I said, a year and a half ago when I started this shit, he put me on his panels on a Saturday. My vision was different. I got behind the curtain. I started to see what was popping. I'm like, nah, I really don't want to do this. You got to understand something. There's a lot of slots. Anything that's independent, bro, you should support. Because we talk about masculinity. We talk about women working for you and all that shit. You got to respect the dude that wants to do something from scratch. You're not gonna. We're not going to get the support because the two people that are leading the charge are out of here. Okay? They don't even want to be a part of this. So in order for us to, try, I guess, to try to redeem the quality or kind of just the essence of what this shit was supposed to be in my view right because i'm new in my view i think we got to support our own bro we got to support people that you guys still want to hear stories like this you guys still want to talk about shit like this the most successful unfortunately videos for afi are the ones that are the things that you guys want to talk about even though Glenn, the, the basis of the movie is framed. There's still going to be a lot of elements of things that you guys still have questions for. So we got to support each other so we can keep this shit around. It's, it's like, you know what I mean? You got to pay it forward. You do something nice for somebody, that person probably won't do it nice back to you, but someone else will. That's how the universe works, bro. And if you think super chatting and supporting content creators that are not of the people now i'm not dis denouncing anybody let me just say that before anybody comes after my fucking head but what i'm saying is you got to understand where you're at and what what um difference you can make and contribute to this shit because once people leave and they move on you're left with what <laughs> you're not really left with anything that you guys can lose and they're leading the charge so if you guys those are the vibes you guys we got to be here and you got to support the guys that really want to do something different that's going to be beneficial and things that you guys can relate to. <clears throat> it's funny that you mentioned like, okay, you know, everything independent is good. Like I, I go, I don't, I don't buy regular coffee. I try not to go to Starbucks. They're everywhere, but I'll go to a small, small mom pop shop because the quality is better. It may not have all the flavors, right? but the quality is better. Right. In this community, we have, a story we have pers not prescriptions but we have experience and i i got into hollywood like i'll be honest i never got into this industry to make money like i'm a re i'm a retired veteran i get paid by the va every month i'm good i make money based off the va acting was always a hobby and it grew into something more for me and then I got tired of the content that I'm seeing. And I remember Rolo saying like, well, if you're tired of something, then do something about it, change it. Boom. And that's exactly what we're trying to do here. We're trying to change this, this image of men. And, and, and really I'm not into the whole holding women accountable thing. I am. If you're in my personal life, if you're a woman in my life, I'll hold you accountable. But all the other women out there, that's none of my business. I really right. don't care. Right. You know, I don't got to worry about you. But what I can do is teach men, give men content on how to how to prioritize it. To say, hey, guess what? 
your value is more it has to your value has to be way more in your eyes than she is right and if you don't value yourself more than she does or you value her she's not going to value you at all right and that's the things that we got to do and that's the content that we need to create that's what we talk about i'm not here to bash women i love women i get women that are they're crazy they don't make sense sometimes you know but we we don't we don't make sense sometimes either so you know what we're not perfect the male species is not flawless but we could talk about our flaws and correct our flaws and say hey if you want to have success if you want to have a better life try these things or try avoiding these things you know and right. we talk about it here and we we could do 2 hours 3 hour 4 hour 5 hour podcasts and we're just giving information but people, some people are visual learners. You know, there's so many things that I learned in a movie that I would never have learned in a classroom, but the movie taught me a, something personal. Like my stepdad's black. I knew I grew up in a in a very mixed household. My brothers and sisters are black. I didn't understand racism as most people understand racism because we grew up colorblind. You know, I was treated just like the rest of the kids. But when I watch Mississippi Burning, or you know, what's the one with um, Samuel Jackson? That's Mississippi Burning, right? Samuel Jackson and um, uh, Matthew McConaughey. A time um, to kill. Time to kill. Like when I watch movies like that, I'm like, oh my god, there's a level of racism that I wasn't aware of because my black stepdad didn't allow me to see color the way people saw color. Right. And it's like I learned more from a movie than I did in my own life experiences. And that's what movies do for us. They they are, you know, they're stories that we could adapt and, and take positive things and adapt them to our life. And, and we can notice really? these things and relate to them and we can apply them in our lives and become better. That's the great thing about movies. For sure. Hey, money, Mitch. Real quick, shout out to shout out to my Dan Lux L Nixon. He said, "Av got a great voice for the podcast. He's enjoying the content you're putting out with Afi. Hey, I'm with my with me. <laughs> I'm reading my name and shit. I watched a Sterling Cooper video the other day. You had excellent input on the dirty talk subject course. Money, Mitch, go to the one before that." And it's an in-person one. That's even better than that one because we are. Word. Thank you, Money Mitch. I appreciate your support, man. You know what I mean? This this is what we're talking about. This is what we're manifesting. I feel, um, you know, paying it forward. You know what I mean? Somebody saw talent in him. He saw some passion in me. He saw that I was willing to learn and kind of invest back into the craft. And um, he decided to put me on it. Now here we are. You know what I mean? Glenn has good intentions too you know what good are ideas and talking points unless we put them to use that's what movies are for and movies are to give you uh some hope right you know what i mean especially when you're talking about an rp movie we're not going to be giving you disney program we're really going to give it to you raw so you guys can so survive and thrive in the real world <laughs> like you know sometimes the real world doesn't have a happy ending but again like i always say men learn uh, a loss is not a, uh, you know, a loss is a lesson. You know what I mean? It depends on how you look at it. So I appreciate you money, Mitch, bro. Yo, you know, it's like, do you, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Boom. And I think that's the big difference between the red pill and anything else. Because being in the red pill means you're not going to be happy, but you're going to be right. <laughs> you know, in, 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 in certain, in, in, in most things, you know, like, um, you know, like if a woman says she's going to do something, she doesn't do it, but she keeps you happy, but it leads to something worse on the line. Do you want to be right in correcting that behavior now? Or would you rather just keep quiet and just be happy, happy wife, happy life, and then pay for it in the end? You know, there's a difference between that, that, that train of thought. And I think Rolo brought that up before. He's like, hey, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? And I'm like, man, that's so true because I don't want... Happiness doesn't mean you're going to be right. You can, there's been plenty of times I've been right, but it's been, I've been unhappy that I was right. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's crazy too. I, I, I feel, and I say this all the time. 
it's not about being right anymore. It's about being wrong, right? So it's like we know so much. RP, our experiences, the content, the people that we associate ourselves with, the things that we can relate to, we kind of develop a sense, right? A sort like a sense of discernment, right? They talk about discernment. How do you get discernment, AV? You live and learn, you learn, you listen, you watch, you pay attention, you accumulate all the shit that you're doing. And uh, for me at this point, bro, I'd rather be, you know, you want to impress me, prove me wrong. And not in a combative way, but prove me wrong, bro. Like prove that 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 you're not the typical single mother. Prove to me that you're not a selfish hater. Prove those things to me because RP is bigger than women. RP is about maintaining your frame, optimizing your frame. And your frame is basically your mind, mind game. You know what I mean? Dominance mindset. So it's all about mindset. <laughs> so at the end of the day, you guys got to really take apart and decide what direction you want to go. Do you want to be happy? Because ignorance is bliss, right? Bliss is happy. Or do you want to be aware? As a man, you have to be realistic, right? Women always want to be happy. Men want to be protective and understand what's going on. So at the end of the day, you got to pick a side, bro. You can't just decide because you want to be and understand the um, the opposite sex. You have to think like them, bro. We have to stop conforming to what we think they want. And we have to start conforming or, or, or really standing strong to in the back of the mind knowing what they really need. And eventually, if we did this as a collective, bro, women will start to fix their, their behaviors. But there's no chance to sight for that. So at the end of the day, you guys got to utilize your time wisely. Focus on yourself. Grind all that shit. And then that way, when the time is right, somebody happens to come in your, your path, you'll be prepared to do whatever you want to do with her. And that's that's facts. That's 100. Because, you know, that's what I've been saying. You know, if more men actually held a standard, held women to a standard, as in... Hey, I want a woman that's going to be pleasant. I want a woman that's going to be, you know, um, uh, peaceful. When I come home, I want to have a peaceful home. Like, it's like right. this. If, I, if I'm the king of my castle and I'm outside slaying dragons all day, when I get home, I better not be slaying no dragons in my house. Right. That's the last place I want to have to slay a dragon is in my castle. Right. But if a woman can't be peaceful and pleasant, then she's an adversary. You know, and guess what? You, we, you can't you can't live with an adversary. That's sleeping with one eye open. Then when you go out there and you start slaying dragons, you're not going to have the time or energy to really slay those dragons, right? Because you've been sleeping with one eye open like this, worried about the dragon in your own home. And if enough guys had a standard, be like, you know what? We're not going to tolerate this behavior. We're not going to tolerate this attitude. We're not going to tolerate these actions. And if that be that, if guys around the world did that, it didn't matter what the culture, what laws that they try to employ us upon us, they wouldn't get their way. Because if men held a standard and lived by that standard, unilaterally across the whole board, there would be no such thing as OnlyFans. <laughs> okay? The, the only reason why OnlyFans makes money is because guys pay for it. Women ain't paying for OnlyFans. Exactly. <laughs> so it's 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 we gotta we gotta address men's behavior before we can even talk about women's behavior. And that's what the movie Mind Dates is about. It, it's really talking about women or men's behavior and where men fail in understanding what frame is and how to live a life that's gonna be beneficial and prosperous for themselves. I think it's over, bro. I mean, because <laughs> because man, dudes be in these spaces talking all this player player swag. Dude, I mean, I mean, look, you can go to any, you can go to any hot chicks. You can even go to not hot chicks Instagrams, bro, and look at the comment section, bro. I'd be disgusted, bro. It'd be like, I want to marry you. Oh my god, all this stuff. It's like, bro, like she ain't even. He ain't even attractive, bro. Like, and then it's like it's weird, bro. Because like, because they like compete with each other to validate Jesus. somebody that they, need, they don't that shouldn't even be publicly. Y'all even y'all don't even do it in private, bro. Like, at least I mean, the message, whatever you, if you want to marry her, you think she's the best thing that ever happened. That's cool, but keep it to yourself, bro. You, I mean, you go on there and be like, man, you a ten, and then. 
and then somebody will like that and hop on the comment. No, use a 12. Like, bro, what the hell be going on, bro? Then you guys be wondering what. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, like, like you said, Fee, it's, you know, not to, to, to be negative, but when Fee says it's over, that just means that it's not necessarily over, but things are bad, right? So things are bad. So how do we encourage men not to complain about women? We don't complain about women over here. Fine. Nobody's complaining about women. Nobody hates women. But we have to equip you. Now, Glenn said he was in the service, so thank you for your service. We have to equip you. For whatever this imaginary, this war, whatever you want to call it, because at the end of the day, men are outnumbered, right? TV, narrative, cancel culture, women, all this shit. So men are outnumbered. And you guys, unfortunately, for whatever reason, are not as brave or eloquent to be able to kind of talk about some of the things that, you know, Afi, Glenn, and all the other content creators before me have kind of fallen on their sword. I think. We they need a little bit more respect, bro. Whether it's support on the on a video, whether it's sharing the content, whether it's supporting the movie, bro. Because you gotta understand, bro. Like we're doing what we're doing is not the popular thing to do. Not only for the content, but because it's it's the least lucrative as far as being able to sustain ourselves and keep the lights on. So, but it's the most important thing that you guys need. So you gotta you gotta pick a side, man, in a sense and say, okay, you know what, man? I may not like his videos all the time. I'm not helping his algo, but let me support what he's doing because he's trying to do something bigger for us. Because we all gonna benefit. What good is this knowing this shit if we're not sharing it with you guys? Well, that's that's the thing that for me, that's what it was. Cause I remember when I went through my divorce and I got zeroed out, I was just like, what the hell do I do? And I was spiraling, just didn't know what the heck to do. And I came across Rollo's book and I read all three of them that he had out at the time. And then I was like, Move, bro. okay, I know what I need to do now. I know how I need to operate. I know where I need to correct. I wasn't even mad. I'm not even mad at my ex as much as, as, as people might think I am. I'm more mad at myself for allowing such behavior to take place. I'm mad at myself for excusing bad behavior mm. and rewarding it. Mm. I'm mad at myself. I'm not even mad at her. I can't be mad at somebody that was getting rewarded that I was rewarding. You know, it was that I was, I realized that I had to address me. The biggest problem, 90, 100% of the, the problem in all my life, in my common denominator is myself. It's me not doing, being aware and or making bad decisions or not or believing people I shouldn't have I should have vetted more. It's me. I'm the I'm the number one common denominator in all my problems. And when I realized that, it wasn't this, I wasn't like throwing a pity party for me, like, what was me? I got taken by a woman, she gained me, blah, blah, blah. It was damn, I was an idiot because I didn't see these red flags when I saw them. I chose to ignore them. I chose not to stand up for myself. I chose not to rock the boat because I was afraid. And at that point, I was like, damn, I'm an idiot. Because even if I would have rocked the boat, I would have saved myself the heartache that I went through now. Even if I would have rocked the boat, I would have been able to approach it differently. And maybe I would have fixed the situation differently. And we wouldn't have had the problems that I had later on in life if I would have rocked the boat. But too many guys don't want to rock the boat. And I'm telling you, you got to start shaking that boat and make sure that your boat is sound because your boat's going to take on some water whether you allow it or not. You just got to be able to know how to maneuver the boat when it does and don't go down with the ship. And that's what a lot of times happens is guys don't know how to maneuver this ocean called relationships and they take on a whole bunch of water and the girl's jumping ship and now you're going down with the ship. You know... Afi's always promoting, um, you know, um, self-awareness, um, perhaps a monk mode, just kind of identifying who you are. I have a friend of mine, um, 
we're not as close as we used to be, but long story short, you know, he's rather abusive, right? He can get really aggressive with his girl. So they tussle and shit. I think he smacks her around a couple of times and shit. He been to jail because she called five Oh on him anyway. So there was a party, a get together. And I went to the party and she was out of pocket. Um, uh, and I had to check her ass, but the next day I had to go see him. He's a barber. And apologize to him, but I told him, yo, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not fucking with you guys because you don't know how to manage your woman. Long story short, he's a friend of mine, so I try to walk him off the ledge. And basically what he was saying, he was tolerant. He he was justifying her bad behavior be, to compensate for the fact that he sometimes loses it on her. He's aggressive. He doesn't know how to control. He's got an anger problem. A lot of guys, and just to kind of tie it to what you said, Glenn, a lot of guys don't want to rock the boat because they don't necessarily know how, right? It's either one side of the spectrum where they just get really angry and they do shit. And in order to apologize, to apologize verbally, they tolerate some of her bullshit just to kind of compensate for the fact that they had no damn self-control. So to circle back to Afi, Afi's always talking about learn yourself, bro. Embrace solitude. Figure out what makes you tick because if you're not whole, you got an anger problem. There's no reason why you with the woman because now you, you roughed her up, she takes you back, but now that cost of taking you back is you having to deal with all the bullshit, ignoring red flags, wasting your time. And then when she's tired of you, she's moved on, and now you got to pick up the pieces and shit. Maybe you got kids, maybe you owe oh, your credit's bad now. You guys understand, bro? <laughs> like, after your thirties, when you start, like, the older you get, the, 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 the costlier your errors are, your, the mistakes are. If, you get a, if I get a broad pregnant now, how much is that going to cost me? If I make a mistake and fuck up my credit, how long is that going to take? I'm 48. So now I got to wait till I'm 55 to fix my credit. Like, you got to make moves, bro. So when we talk about OGs, we talking about all this shit. Guys, you guys better hope you guys are going to be our age soon. Swagged out, not checked out, figuring things out. If you guys can save yourself some time, and listen to some of the things, support some of the creations that want to kind of preserve the community, bro. You're going to save time because as you get older, bro, the mistakes that you make are costlier. And most guys get zeroed out. They cannot rebound. Most guys can't, bro. They have out financial obligations. They just don't care anymore, bro. And then they wind up being miserable. And then they support the women that we want to fix. The only fan broads, single mothers and all that shit, bro. This shit is real, man. <laughs> like, and, and the thing is, it's like, you know, it's. Do you hear that? You ever heard like the, what happens is like this is my personal opinion, is when the victim becomes the victimizer. All right, yeah. all right, and we have that in our culture in our society now, and what happens is, and I can I can I can attest to this, like, yo, I. <laughs> I'll be real. I have I don't really share this with a lot of people. Um, I was charged for a crime that I did not commit. And when I was in the military, I had to go through a court martial, a nine month court martial of being accused of a crime against a woman that I didn't commit. And then she lies on stand, ruins my whole military career because nine months <laughs> I was up for promotion. You know, I got removed from my my uh, secret clearance you know my car was vandalized i had threats against me i was 19 years old and nobody i didn't know about the red pill back then i mean it wasn't even prevalent back then and i went through this whole thing wondering why did this woman lie on me because her boyfriend found out she cheated on her oh you know and then <laughs> right but it was like yo I wrote that funny. girl lied and it cost me my whole career. I mean, I get paid for it now, but the fact is like my interaction with women after that changed, completely changed. I couldn't trust them, you know? And it's like those stories, like I could easily become a victimizer and start victimizing women off of that. But women tend to do that with men and guys get so frustrated and they get so beat up and tired of the same bullshit of girl cheating on him, girl leaving him or girl gaming him. And he's out there, you know, now on his ass and now he's pissed off. And then now the next woman comes around. He thinks that she's going to do the same thing. 
and then he does the smack a whole thing. And it's not even about the woman that he actually smacked. It's actually about all the bullshit all the other women did in his life that finally yes. led us to that. And they don't, and by not correcting that, by not addressing the problems back then, which was themselves by choosing to be with these women, by choosing to allow certain behavior to go on, they end up victimizing somebody that didn't even deserve to be victimized. Boom. And women do the same thing. Women are just more calculated with it. They have a whole social media and industry to help them do it. But, you know, it goes back to where I was saying, like, for me, it was I made the mistake because I chose to interact with a certain woman with a, a certain caliber of attitude or or, or, or less than um, less than honest type of people. I knew this girl was out there. I chose to interact with that. So that's my fault. That's part of that's part of my blame. But people don't realize it. And I think that's what Avi teaches a lot. It's like, yo, understand yourself. Understand the game. Know what you're getting yourself into and address yourself. I don't really, the only time I really hear anybody talking about women is when we had that who's worse conversation. Was it men or women? Because other than that, we always talk about the guys fucking up the game. Mm-hmm. And, and that's really what it is. Men need to learn how to be men. And there's not enough men out there teaching men to be men. Mm-hmm. And we have this space, which is great. But I think even in this space, it could kind of be tainted. It's tainted because people don't understand it. Like it. They don't have the experience to to make the connection. Shout, shout out to my brother, Captain Saver, bro. King peace, Dre. peace. That that that's King Dre. If y'all don't know, he changed his his name in the channel because he got a new podcast. So you make sure y'all check it out on Tuesdays. Uh, yeah, on Tuesdays. If you if you search King Dre, it'll still come up though. So in case y'all confused, that is King Dre with the capo. He's saving you, bros. And it's, it's hard saving you bros too, bro. It's hard it's trying to save you bros. <laughs> it is not easy, bro. Like, cause I don't know. I, I think we had the conversation before AV how you know it, it's hard to like it's hard to like teach cats mistakes. Cause that's mm. it's West bars. Hold on. Mm. Let's go. Hold up. Put my sound effect, bro. Hold up. <laughs> Let's back. go. Yeah, y'all. Yo. You got, hey, you got y'all, y'all, y'all tune in for us to teach y'all mistakes, bro. I really don't be wanting to do it. But y'all, you know, and it's like, I get it. You know, it's like, yo, you let us have our fun. No, bro, fun is getting your shit out the way first and getting uh-huh. and getting your program and then step into the game from a high level on the playing field. That's fun, bro. Not <laughs> Not what you think, bro. It's not. It's not as far as you think. It's not as fun that you, as you think. It's very time consuming. So y'all want to learn how to do something that it ain't going to benefit you in the long run. I mean, if you were natural, then that's another thing because you're just taking the skill and you're able to ride a bike fast. So it's not. It's not. It's not taking so much out of you to really learn but a lot of you guys is you guys are the same and when i say you guys i don't just necessarily mean the people listening just in the chat but just period y'all in the same position that y'all was in 2017 when i came around no 2018 when i came into space y'all y'all cats haven't grown at all bro and i be trying to figure out how because i mean i don't expect people to grow at my pace but i do like want to see like mindset elevation bro and a lot of times i don't i just be wondering why bro you know this this is um it's it's hard you know and i can i I give you guys a lot of respect the the actors the movie directors the content creators you know you guys motivate me because like i said on my show too bro it's like imagine having (laughs) you know 300, 2,000 people listening to you simultaneously, engaging them, keeping them entertained, and trying to teach them shit. Because, like, for us being older men, we got to understand the business, how to keep our lights on, but we also have to 
decide what route we're going to take as far as our moral compass, our integrity, and what we know to be true and beneficial for you guys the long run, right? We all know that game and money, game and women and shit, that's a temporary fix if you're not applying the game to everything else in life because you can have, it's kind of like work-life balance, right? You could be working, doing this shit all day on the, on the mic, but you don't know, you forget how to interact with human beings. So game, RP, is life in its totality and what i feel saying is it's hard to teach somebody that they're making a mistake that's gonna reveal itself in the future when you don't know you're making the mistake so it's like it's like doc brown and marty mcfly and shit you got to take our word for it that's why we tend to share our l's Glenn shared a story about you know what i mean some things he went through and shit i share shit afi has shared shit once you put it on on the on 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 the internet, it's out there, bro. So sometimes I say shit that could offend somebody. I talk about I got friends that are simps. A couple niggas had to check me and be like, "Yo," I was like, "Nah, my J duh. or I'd be like, "Bro," but you know. So at the end of the day, man, you know it's it's tough to let you guys know without you guys getting offended because most of you niggas are not in the chat. The world of pussy. You haven't you not you haven't played sports. You're not accustomed to listening to another man tell you, bro, you can't do that, my G. Then you get offended. Then you want to box a nigga. So at the end of the day, man, it's hard for you guys. Look, most people just want to be heard. They don't want to be helped. And Afi, being a teacher and a coach and does a lot of consultations, it's tough. It takes a lot out of us to try to give you guys what you need and just what let you watch you just keep it to the side and do something that's totally opposite, bro. It's frustrating, but well, it's also like sometimes you can give people this like great knowledge and stuff, and they're like, "Oh, that's not going to happen to me." Oh my god! You know what? <laughs> hey, hey, and you know, and I and I sit there and I go, "You know what?" All right, bro. Okay, I hey. hope I hope it doesn't. I really hope it doesn't. But if it does, hey, this is how you can recover. And a lot of guys think they have game, but they don't have game, bro. You know bro. what I mean, like. Like I, I I I laugh at when people are like oh yeah I could bet a girl okay cool guess what I could do that too I could do that in my sleep you know what I mean like yeah. that's nothing <laughs> it's, that's nothing like half the time they want it anyway so like it's nothing yeah women don't value sex anymore guys they oh. don't tell you that like y'all think this is not the 1990s like when a girl gave you a BJ that meant you were significant or special bro you can get that in the bathroom new on a female for like 15 minutes bro easy hey so the question hey I got a question for you if if back in the day in the 90s the BJ was a thing like if you got a BJ that means you significant oh so is it now anal <laughs> I'm just asking for a friend <laughs> it, it, gotta, it gotta be that I mean it gotta be it gotta be something, some some extra. I mean, I don't know, bro. And the thing is, it's, it was just different. Like, say, if I met a woman after school, most likely, you know, there wasn't no cell phone, so I wouldn't talk to that chick till around eight, nine o'clock. She hasn't talked or interacted with ten to fifteen dudes by the time. Oh. But but now it's like, yeah, we we exchanged, we had a moment and stuff, and her ex is hitting her up. Dudes is sliding her story. She putting nasty pictures up. That's married. You you married putting the nasty. You married putting the nasty pictures up. What are you trying to do here? Like, and I'll be trying to figure out, like, yeah, it's 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 wet for you or whatever. Like, okay, so so what type of attention are you gonna get? Because you and then when dudes come in your DM and they disrespect you, then you want to screenshot them and say, cats ain't shit, bro. Like, look look, look at the type of baits you putting out there, bro. At, 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 least put, at least put the relationship vibe memes. There's plenty of those. There's actually pages of those where it's two people nasty, oh two people doing nasty stuff together. And then you put your name and you put your husband name, bro. Don't be having the solo you got the WAP and all of that, bro. And then when cats want to get at you crazy, you want to, you want to, no, man. Well, what type of thing are you trying to do? Like, what is the, is the marriage that born to where you got to get the validation to make you feel good? I mean, you just can't dress sexy for your man and get your hair cut like a different style 
and put on some heels to where he'll notice you and then you come in the house and then he like damn baby you, did you do something different that's that's too much for your husband ain't it it's too much sarcasm it's too much i don't really understand well if, you know i go by the rule of like how you present yourself you are your best business card all right when i was a bodybuilding competitor and i trained people for bodybuilding my physique spoke for me i didn't have to say anything you knew that with the six pack and everything, all the muscles popping out, like you knew out the gate what I was about. You knew I lift and you knew I could teach you how to lift. So I didn't have to go sell you anything. Same thing. I, I, I tell girls this all the time. Like, look, if you dress like a hoe, if you dress showing your cleavage, guess what? You are branding yourself as a hoe. Whether you are one or not, you are marketing yourself this way. People are going to see you as that. When people saw me as a bodybuilder, they thought that's all I was. They didn't care that I had a degree in religion from Liberty University. They didn't care that I had military experience. They thought I was a muscle head that just lift weights and he could help me get in shape. And that's fine. But that because that was a that was what I presented to them. So if women present themselves on social media or in public in a certain context that's giving people a certain impression that cannot be mad on the responses they get based off the impression they give. And that's how, you know, you are your best business card. If you dress like a construction worker, I think you know how to build a house. Okay. Right. <laughs> if you, if you dress like you suck dick for $5, I'm going to think that you suck dick for $5. You yeah. know, like yeah. it's true. Definitely. You know, I think I think the pro one of the problems there are two. I don't think women necessarily anymore. They don't in my view. I don't think they care about how you guys how men perceive them, because to one guy that's saying you look like a hoe, there's five other dudes celebrating her behavior. I think men have a problem with the fact that women are doing this and they're trying to change women who are doing this. Hey, so. Let me, so, just say, let me just say one thing because you might even want to say this, bro. We grown. I watch porn sometimes. I'm pretty sure y'all watch porn. Yeah. And if y'all don't, y'all have seen it. Dude, the comments on Instagram be more thirsty than actually people having sex. Like the porn, you go on the comment section, people be like, damn, she got ass. It's none of these marriage proposals and shit. And they're actually doing naked, all of it. The Instagram stuff, they get, they're get they thirstier for the fantasy than actually seeing it. It's crazy, bro. That's what I'm saying, bro. That's like, it, to, you know, to, listen, man. Again, guys are mad at women for doing what they're doing. If you, wanna be, if you don't want to be with a hoe, you can't change a hoe, right? Unless she changes herself. Afi's talking about the, the, the comments are thirsty, bro. That's the first thing dudes look at now. Now, whenever I see something that's crazy, I'm looking at the comments because I'm like, right. hey, let's that's before I don't even look at I look at the title, then the comments. And the comments and the engagement will determine whether I'm gonna watch the flick or not. Because it's like, all right, let me see what this is about. So at the end of the day, when you see people's you should really see because the thing is this, man, the mic avatars people look, think this is anonymous and shit so they could say shit they could be reckless on the mic on the keyboard but they really show their true uh mindset simping i mean jesus christ it's 2022 porn is free i mean are you still leaving thirsty comments for everybody to see hoping that someone's gonna stick on the wall bro like you gonna get noticed my nigga like There's you no said it's right in that you guys keep doing it you know i'm saying you guys aren't even you're not even stop you know, <laughs> Bro, like, why you stop doing it? Come on, man. Yo, there's like, there's, there's no way in words. Somebody DM me. I became an international. If you get thirsty on the comment sections, what's your percentage of one out of ten? Please tell me. I'll give you a hundred dollars. What's your percentage? Every for every ten thirsty comments you leave, how many chicks you pull from them ten? Come That's on, what you know. I mean, really. You know what, what's what's sad is, is like, again, words don't mean shit. <laughs> okay, so so what? You left the thirstiest, thirstiest comment in the world. It's not backed up by action. It's not going to move somebody. Actions move people. You know what I mean? If you if and and if you want a girl, the girl's going to move 
because of the way you move. All right. If your if your if your words the way you move in life um, coincide with what you say, then the girl's gonna move in that direction if she wants you. I'm sorry, guys. Like, but this internet the internet game where you're hollering at girls on their Instagram or their Facebook pictures that doesn't do nothing. It's really funny because like my girl got a comment on her picture like a month ago. And some dude is just like thirsting after her, and I'm laughing at him. I'm sitting here laughing. I'm like, does he really think this is gonna work? Like, because I don't even, I don't even gotta say shit. She shut him down. You know, she showed it to me. She's like, yo, look at this guy. This is really funny, don't you think? I'm like, yeah, it's pathetic because dude don't even know where you are, who are you with, or what the case may be. But he is like pouring his heart out right here, and I feel bad for him because that's all he knows what to do. <laughs> And and it doesn't take a lot of game or or charisma to type something out and make a girl feel like something that even though it's not being noticed. So you said something important that actions speak. So now women actions and gestures don't even speak to women anymore. It's more about dollar signs. So I really want men to really start applying that philosophy to themselves. Women feel the most valued or appreciated when you're giving them attention or you paying for shit. You're using your resources. So men need to start requiring investments from the woman too i said this a while back and i'm still mean this shit bro like most bitches can't afford me not because i'm high post but because you need to sponsor some shit bro not just fucking chicken wings don't flip the bill over the coffee like you know what i like to eat you heard like on some g shit because bitches can't afford niggas but they want niggas to be able to afford them. And it's like, no. First of all, you're wearing fashion. No, I mean, respectfully, like, let's not play that game. Like, you're a boss bitch. You're not a boss bitch. So at the end of the day, man, guys need to start I implementing. I feel right if I'm with a chick, bro. She don't never spend no money, bro. She's no, out. That. That you're done. How does that happen, bro? Like, how, how, how does it happen? How do you? Listen. How is How are you, like, in a relationship? I'm trying. I'm asking y'all in the chat too. Like, how does that happen? A relationship is two people. So, how is it a relationship when you are sponsoring all the fun? How that make you feel? It make you feel like a man. That, okay. Know. Thank you, bro. That's another thing, my G. That makes Dude, me for feel me. like you're a cash like, cow. I, I, I need to be flattered sometimes. Like, damn, baby, that well, was everything. Awesome. Like, I, I'm used to that. So, I, if I'm just dealing with a chick and I'm the goddamn sponsor. I'm not cutting that part out of my life and shit. And let me say this too. This is for me. I'm not speaking for the dudes, for my, my guys on the mic. It, what I am accustomed to, I need you to understand it's not cap or um, if I have expectations of somebody, a, a woman that I'm seeing, you have to take it upon yourself to assume, right? Based on all the detective work that you've done, I've done this before. This is what I'm accustomed to. This is what standards are, right? So if you're accustomed to something, I don't have to tell you exactly what she did. It's your job, if she's into you, to try to at least meet you halfway. If she can't financially sponsor, she can get creative. If I want to do something a little lavish, she could discourage me because, you know what I mean, she understands that she can't sponsor dates too. This is what I'm talking about. We are accustomed to shit like this. This ain't some imaginary shit because... You have to have conviction, <laughs> conviction about what you're doing and what you're talking about. And the less, less is more. Most dudes that talk, and I know this is a receipt era. I know that. And this is something that, you know, if you want to go super, quote unquote, you have to kind of show receipts. I get that. But at the end of the day, man, most men are not accustomed to some type of treatment. This is why women treat you guys the way they see fit. But if a man can control three to five broads in a rotation, that's because he's accustomed to three to five broads. And everyone's acting accordingly and everyone's getting along. So that's what it is. Dude, and it, go, it goes back, it goes back they take, to... They take pride in buying women purses, bro. And stuff like that. Like, yeah, you know, shorty, I had to get her to move. <laughs> and then, you know, I mean, I don't know, bro. Like, Hey, you know what? You it's gotta, you gotta right. understand why you have problems, bro. Like that ain't you are you are not the provider. Does it's not the same thing as like you don't provide for your woman the same way you provide for your girl. Like your girl is not your daughter, bro. You it's funny you mentioned that because the purse thing. Because 
<laughs> there's a line. Yeah, they want to give him a house over their head, clothes on their back. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? Yo, it's funny because there's a line in my movie, in Mind Dates, where um, my co-star, um, his, name is, his real name is Riot, but uh, the character name is Benny. And he goes, man, I just never been on a, a only been on one and a half dates. And I'm never going to be able to walk with a girl down the park and hold her purse. <laughs> like he's saying all the beta stuff. All right. And my character's looking at him like, hold her purse? Like, why the fuck do you want to hold a woman's purse? He's not trying to hold her hand. He wants to hold her purse. And we we, we did that intentionally because we have one, like, my character is this former alpha guy that got zeroed out. And then Benny is a guy that's been failure to launch, like, never been on a, re- never had a relationship. He's had one and a half dates. And I don't know how you can have a half date but he had one in this movie and it's really funny. And you see the contrast between the, 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 the types of men that there are, you have Benny, who is this very beta guy that just wants to please and serve women. And he'll do, he even gets with like the meanest girl, the bitchiest girl at work, just because he likes her and she knows that he's going to be rich. And he didn't care until the very end. He's like, oh, excuse me. He's like, you don't like me for me. You like me for my money. And then he wakes up and he gets woke and he's like, I don't want this. And he kicks her out. Like he dismisses her. And it's really funny because he is this super beta looking guy telling this baddie to kick rocks. And you wouldn't see that in normal society today. And we had to put that in the movie because we wanted we wanted the not the alpha guy to look like the one that's taking charge in the situation. We needed to show somebody that is that that could be more relatable because it's easy for the alpha guy to be like, I'm done with you. Go, you know, but the guy that has that pussy on top of the pedestal mindset and you can't upset the woman. We had to have him stand up to her and be like, I'd rather be alone than be with you, you know? And it was monumental because it's really comedic the way that it happens because he ends up using the same words that she used against him on their date. And then he's like, it's not going to work. You're dismissed type of thing. And he's like, I told you be gone, you know, like the type of thing. And, And most women are not used to that. Most women won't take like a uh, rejection like that. And we wanted to show that contrast of men are so used to taking rejection and we have to take it. You know, we take rejection every single day. Now, maybe not from women, but we deal with adversaries and rejection daily. Sure. You know, with the movie being scammed and I got, that's a rejection for me. I have to take that and roll with it and move on and do something better and make it happen. Right. You know, we, we, we're used to rejection. <clears throat> women are not used to rejection the way men are, are conditioned for rejection. And I think that's the difference. Men are conditioned for rejection. Women are not. And in the dating world, when you when we have that scene play out where the guy doesn't want to carry her purse no more, he doesn't want to be her, her little uh, puppy, you know, it, it changes the game for him. And also it shocks her because she's never experienced that. And most women need, I think a lot of women need to experience that, you know, that, that no, no is a good word for men to say. Yeah, it is. You know, I grew up, you know, it, 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 it goes back to, to people's um, upbringing too, because I was raised by women who, finesse cats so I never wanted to be those cats that were that, that was being finesse because I see I see the respect that's lacking of it and you know Topaz no just because just because you're doing these things and the woman is sleeping with you it doesn't mean that she respects you it just means that she likes you when she's horny bro boom boom she likes you and she's horny bro she likes you. She's horny. 
Why not have sex with the cat that's doing these things? That doesn't make her respect you, man. It does not. It's not going to keep her as well. What will keep her is the respect, right? The respect. And, and even that's, you know, can be fleeting as well. But like Afi was saying, you know, you guys, again, fellas, we learn from losses, not wins, right? So you guys would equate a win to a receipt. You guys, you guys want to keep watching winners, but you're not watching the winners behind the scenes training for the win, right? So you guys want to look at all the flashy shit, you want to get pussy, you want to have sex, where you think you won. Three months later, now you back on Tinder, chipping away the ice, you're doing all the shit, listen, keep grinding, etc. But you haven't learned anything because now you're applying the hope strategy. You're thinking that because I've watched a really great video yesterday, I got my questions answered. I got a nice consultation. I'm going to be ready to conquer the world. No, bro, you're not. Because at the end of the day, you're still trying to do, you're still trying to find that one that the shit that you heard on a video is going to work on. No, sir. What happens when that broad, <laughs> what happens when that broad meets a bigger, better deal? You ass out again. And it's Groundhog Day for your ass. Rinse and repeat. So what I feel saying is respect, mindset authenticity all the things that you guys are avoiding you wind up going back to because you're starting from scratch when you start from scratch you're learning that iron sharpens eyes and we learn from losses when you start every time you start from scratch it's a l bro it's either a loss or a lesson depending on how you move from that starting from scratch bro is going to determine whether it's a loss or, or a lesson bro if it's a lesson you're going to move on if it's a loss you're going to keep Calling in, super chatting, getting different advice from different coaches, nothing new, just different delivery. Are you still chasing I'm broads, a, trying to change broads? Bro, that's I'm on a, you. That's the thing. That's the thing. The, 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 I, I want to oh, hold on. Let me, let me hit this real quick, Avi, because AV hit something real hard right there. He said, You keep on trying to change broads. <laughs> right. Okay. And really, the whole thing that you need to change is you you can't oh. change broads you can change how you move what you decide to take what you decide to accept if you like i won't accept certain behaviors i don't care who you are whether you're my mother whether you're my girl whether you're my kid i don't care who you are if you come at me with a certain behavior i will cut you off Right. Until you realize where you fucked up, and then then I could talk to you again. But I won't po tolerate it. I will not tolerate it. And it's true. Losses are lessons, regardless. Whether you, it's only a loss if you choose to ignore the lesson. That's the thing. If you choose to ignore it, because in bodybuilding, we there's a saying called "you push till failure." All right. I was repping three fifteen yesterday or the other day doing bench nice. you know and my heaviest was 465 Jesus. i could have i could have gone heavier right, right. but i was like you know what i feel good right now right 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 you know what i'm saying but i pushed till failure i didn't have anything left in the tank and it's those last reps that i'm struggling to get up is when you're growing and that's yes. failure so failure is a good thing learning is a good thing Failure is where you actually grow. You don't grow in your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing the same game with the same girls and you're getting the same, you know, return and well, investment and you're mad at that is because you're not pushing it to failure. You're not pushing yourself to failure and trying to grow. And that's why you're on that Tinder cycle. What? Speaking of Tinder. Topaz, I'm going to tell you a secret, Topaz. She said a relationship, they are relating to one another, but not in a healthy way. Y'all make sure y'all subscribe to this Topaz, too. And Let's also, go. She got two channels because she a hard-whooping black woman. You a Let's go. So she got another one, too. Go ahead and post your link, Topaz. I'm going to do it. I'm In June, I'm going to do an experiment. I'm going to do this just for my members and Patreon. I'm going to get on a dating app. And I'm gonna be clowning bras just so y'all can see the Drew thing worth the squeeze. I'm gonna be out of pocket on purpose. I don't want mm. no bras on there. I'm just gonna be getting at their ass crazy and I'm gonna put up the screenshots and it's gonna be the same ones y'all like. It's gonna be the same ones y'all like. 
and I'm going to talk to them all types of crazy, and they're going to like it, and they're going to want to debate me, and they're going to want to come to my house, and I'm not going to let them. Hey, we should start that when we go to Mexico. I'll be, we should start it in Mexico. I'm, gonna let them. I'm not going to let them because I'm going to be turned off because it's, it's they too, too easy and predictable. No, I'm saying we should start that experiment when we oh, go to Mexico. Mexico, yeah, the, the tender. No, yeah. I'm going to do it in June because I got to get these books out first. That's priority. Cause I can't. Cause when I get on the data naps, I gotta do it for real. So I gotta, I gotta do it for real. So I gotta science to it. It's been a long time. I gotta make sure I got my gang tight on the on the on the apps. But I'm gonna be clowning, bro. Cause I, cause it don't really matter to me, bro. So it don't. It ain't really. It ain't really no loss. So I'm just gonna do it for fun, just to show you guys. I'm gonna show you guys. Wait and see. So y'all can take some of this icing off of these cakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh huh. Hey, we at the one thirty mark. Let's let's say our last words. I'll say mine first. Uh, appreciate y'all for listening. Make sure that you guys uh uh had the bell notification on the channel and uh, watch old videos too. I hate y'all DM me asking me when the new video coming out. Like y'all watched all of my videos. Y'all haven't. You have not. Why, well, I dare. I promise you, you have not seen every one of my last videos. So quit asking me. Just go watch some old stuff. Follow me on Instagram, International Afi Kingdom. And make sure that you guys follow Glenn and DM him if you guys want to know more information about the film or you want to hit him off with a PayPal or a donation. And if you want to donate to me, you hit me with a cash app and put for film, and then I'm going to forward over to him. And then uh, I'll pass it to AV, and then I'll let you end it, Glenn. Appreciate you, my brothers. Glenn, Afi, you already know, man. Guys, thanks for rocking with us on a Saturday, man. You know, invest, put your money where your mouth is, right? And it's not necessarily just money. Support. You know, likes are free and all of that. Make sure you guys subscribe to Alpha Villains channel on YouTube. Tune into my weekday morning show. Finish your breakfast with AV, 15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday. Follow me on Instagram at Alpha Villains. Always a pleasure, bro. Thanks, guys, for having me on. All good. Glenn, what you got, bro? Yo, so I want to say thanks to, uh, to both of you guys for having me on the panel tonight and talking about this movie. And I'm just going to say this. Hey, both of y'all got a role in it. Nice. Let's go. So, Let's both go. of you guys got a role in it. Appreciate we you, got, bro. We, 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 got, we got plenty of roles, you know, to, to fill. Um, AV, I'm thinking about you being a bouncer. Let's go. <laughs> Whatever it takes, let's go. Me, me, and you have, me and you have a we have a dialogue in, in this bouncer scene. Let's go. So let's go. Shit. Appreciate uh, you. you. Avi, I got you. I think I'm gonna have you play the crazy guy in the hospital. <laughs> but hey, for anybody that really wants to see this movie happening, please donate to these guys. They will take care of you know the getting the funds to the movie. We really want to make scammer. This you know, I got scammed last week, Glenn, for for an art picture with my dog. Somebody scammed me, bro. Hurt my heart. Are you serious? Yeah, bro. Scammed me for some pictures. They looked. They found my dog, and they knew. I, they knew I was gonna bite. You see what I did? <laughs> I hate scammers. <laughs> but yo, like for real, you guys, I would love to get this movie out there. Um, it really, it really is gonna take you guys. If you guys really want a red pill content movie to come out, you want a comedy come out that talks about game that talks about life talks about relationships from a red pills perspective i need your help i try to do it on my own and we got scammed and we have a whole court case and feds going involved in it and, and this, the course it's going to play itself out but i don't want to wait for that and i don't think you guys want to wait for that either and we have two great guys here you know that are going to be in the film I'm telling you right now they'll be in the film let's go um, we need your contribution. Think about it. Everybody that watches the channels, if y'all put five dollars in, we can have this film done in two months. That's just real talk. You know, five dollars. Thank you, Misha. You're wonderful. Uh thank love you, Misha. You. Thank you. Um, but real talk, anybody that's putting five dollars, just skip a Starbucks day, put it to the movie, and this movie will come out in two months. And you, you you will be part of the recipient. This is your project at that point. You pay into it, it's your project. There's something you get to brag about to say that you put out there. Facts. I'm just the vessel. You get to put it out there. 
happen. And that's what we got to do. So thank you guys. Um, <clears throat> thank you as always, AB. I always love listening to your morning shows, dude. It's one of my things. <laughs> thank you, bro. Check into. We grind you know, it. We grind it. Thank hey, you. Get on. He, 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 he want to take a break. Tell him he can't take no break. No, nah, you can't take no breaks, man. Because like I look forward to it now. Like, <laughs> I told him the other day, I said, man, you didn't do a show. I was scrambling this morning. I, had I know. Time. My fault. <laughs> My phone, like, what I'm, what I'm gonna listen to in this time, little my drive. Yeah. Hey, the first thing I do when I wake up, I go to I appreciate I you, my man. YouTube notifications on my phone. I go on my phone, I'm like, what? what yeah, the? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know, it's crazy. Like, I was I was telling Afi, I'm, I'm tired and shit. And I could tell, like, if Afi takes a long time to respond, he's just like, right, how do I tell this thing? You can't take no breaks, bro. <laughs> I peeped that you can't take no breaks, Avi. I'm like, I right, bet. So, we had a conversation, and that led to my Friday show. A lot of the topics and shits because I be talking to this guy all day and he just be sparking me up. I'm like, I right, bet I'm gonna jump in. But yeah, no doubt, man. We're gonna be back on Monday, bro. Hey, yeah. you know what? I'll get up at 5 30 because we're three hours difference. So I'll Let's get go. up at 5 30 and hop for on sure. with you if you ever want. For sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Can. Thank you for that sponsorship, Misha. I want to make sure you recognize that. I'm gonna get a comb and comb your little gray hair. Let's go. This side. Shh. Yeah, oh, yeah. I appreciate that. The other side too. She said it's been our morning routine to listen to AV. That's I appreciate you, baby. Word. Mm -hmm. So y'all make sure y'all like the video. See, I didn't even stress the likes or none of that. I was being a nice guy. I didn't even, I didn't, I didn't even tell y'all to like the video. So now I'm telling y'all now. Make sure y'all like the video, and make sure y'all share the video. Y'all spam it, send it to people the same way y'all be sending me all these red pill things you want me to break down. And these little stuff y'all want me to look at. And Glenn, don't forget to put a, you know, kind of like even in the chat, perhaps, so you, I think can maybe pin it where they can find you, you know, how to get at you as well. Yeah, so I, I think I threw my Instagram Did on you? there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Not, what, what, on the comments, though. In the, in yeah, the, yeah, I threw it in the comments somewhere in here. <clears throat> no, um, in the, I be getting it mixed up because I'm the comment section. This is the chat in the comment section. This is the chat, but leave it in the comment section. Yeah, leave it oh, in the okay, comments. Yeah, 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 I'll drop it in the comments. <clears throat> Make sure y'all leave a drop a comment for the algo. Y'all be saying y'all gonna do it, y'all don't do it. Or lying to me, y'all be lying to me. Y'all said I watched the stop damn lying. Oh, need to. No, yes, you do need to. Y'all do have to. You have to do it. Or I'm gonna just yeah. start smacking people. Man. I'm gonna go. To, I'm gonna smack you randomly. I'm gonna go to jail because y'all aggravated me because I don't like repeating myself. Man. Yeah, don't play. Anyways, y'all have a, a a good Saturday night. And, uh, peace, peace. It, share it. Take care of it. And Word. look forward to us in the movie. Peace. That's it. All right, you guys. Be easy. Good night. Be easy.